Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about doing some detailed engraving on a stone with the CNC. So one of the things that uh, surfing the old interweb and YouTube, I came across this guy's channel, which by hand he carves stones. And I thought this was really interesting because he did some really nice designs. And I've done stuff on, on cutting stones, i.e. cutting stones, with the CNC in the past. And I've done some very interesting things, uh, you know, kind of on the side with this. But I, I'm still really fascinated what one could do more so in the carving arena. So I'm going to try several attempts at it. And this is my first one. Now, one of the things with this channel... Everything I put out here isn't a quote-unquote winner. So my uh, really intent here is to kind of share my experiences. So it's not a tutorial. Do it exactly this way and you'll get it right. I get some of that stuff out there. And sometimes I get it right the first time around. But most of the time, like most of you out there, it takes several iterations. And that's part of the fun and that's the learning experience. And that's really what I want to share is my learning experience with you guys. So I want to talk about this because I came pretty close. I thought this was really cool, even though it didn't turn out exactly as I thought. And I kind of knew it wasn't going to turn out this way. But I tell you what, before we get into that, let's jump into the computer. I'm going to show the setup. I'm going to, if I'm not showing it, I'm going to be showing up there in the corner a time lapse of this being cut on the CNC. And then we'll come back after the computer and talk a little bit more about this. So let's jump into the computer. Okay, so we've jumped in the computer and we're looking at Cut 2D. Now, what I did is I grabbed this image from the internet. It's a free image out here on Wikimedia. Uh, commons and I took and I edited this the text down here just in a photo editing program so I had a plain PNG you can notice from the background that it is a PNG it's a it has a, a alpha background and then what I did is I took that into Inkscape and from Inkscape what I did is I did a trace up here I went up to path and uh, did trace bitmap and converted this into basically a vector image from a PNG. Then what I did is I took and imported that uh, as a EPS, EPS into Cut2D, which is my CAM program that I use. And as you can see here, here I have the basic outline of the vector drawing. Now what I then did is I went in and I created a tool path for it. And here's the tool path. Now what I did is I had it cut online and then what I did is I used an uh, engraver bit here with uh, uh, kind of a long story short. It's got about a 0.5 millimeter diameter on the point. Now I measured the point of the bit because it is a 60 degree bit um, for the rough end of it. So it kind of varies a little bit as actually to where it comes as a point but I took the average. And you can kind of see how it all comes together from there. Uh, now I did set it at a speed, a pass depth of 0.1 millimeter is I think I've mentioned before, a feed rate at 2 millimeters per second because again we're cutting stone so you don't want it really whipping through that material. You want it more so just kind of plodding along a little bit. So with that done, uh, I've gone ahead and I've calculated my path and so I have my path here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set preview tool path. And now one of the things uh, you know, when I did this tool path, this is the result I got, which looks pretty close actually to what was produced in the final product. For some reason, it, we have a higher, uh, a little bit higher stand up here uh, of stone left rather than this perfectly flat like this, but it came out pretty close. And kind of with that being said, when I looked at this, eh, this isn't exactly what I wanted, but I thought that the preview was maybe overcompensating a little bit too much for the end mill. Um, turns out hindsight being foresight or foresight being hindsight, half dozen of the other, this was not the case. So this is roughly how it came out. So it's kind of good to know that the representation here is pretty close now because in the past, you know, I've had it vary a little bit depending upon tool dimensions and, and what I'm kind of doing. And part of this is the cut depth because I do want to go back a little bit uh, to talk about this because if you see up here in the corner, I've got this set for 0.75 millimeters. Now, this is actually quite a bit in retrospect, because remember, we just want to engrave this. We're not attempting to cut this out as an object. Uh, why did I go with 0.75? Because I roughly calculated about a half a millimeter, millimeter error 
in my stone because as I've kind of mentioned before in doing other stone videos I mean and I think I've covered out maybe in the intro or exit here that the stone isn't perfectly level so now what I've tried to do is level it up in the plastic jaws of that vise as much as possible but there's only so much you can really do so with that being said what I did is kind of rough average that so some of it will be higher and lower and, and you can kind of you saw, I kind of saw that in the intro and we'll talk a little bit more of that in the outro when we talk about how it came out but anyways we've now exported this G code so now it's time to jump over to the machine and I'll show you how I set up the job to run and then we'll meet back at the bench so let's head over there okay we're here at the machine I've got the water bath set up on here I've got the vise installed here as you can see I've got my little stone in here I've got my uh, 60 degree tapered roughly I think it's about 60 degree tapered diamond burr in here and I've got everything centered up now one of the things uh, as we talked about in the computer I've got this set to center usually I do corner but since this is an irregular object I take the average of the center and we have it there now notice how these grips have this hole held in the stone on each side so now what I'm going to do is I've got the valve closed <laughs> this time because uh, last time I did this I left the valve open and I'm just going to fill this up this bath up with water just enough to cover the top of the stone. You'll notice the stone is a little bit uh, tapered down and this is why we're going to go a little bit more on the um, on the uh, cut deep so I get the whole thing so because I know it's not going to be uh, uniform. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a touch of high density laundry detergent into the mix which will get swished around in there by the machine as it spins up. Now the reason I do that is a little bit of extra lubricant as well as to kind of keep the particulate matter from kind of clogging up because this will keep everything kind of loose. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go start the machine and uh, start running this job. Okay, welcome back. So we saw on the computer how I set this up all the way from finding it on the internet to running it through Cut2D to actually how I set it up on the machine. Now, one of the challenges with cutting a stone like this is the fact that it's uneven, so its thickness is not uniform, and there isn't an easy way to compensate for this in the CNC. Now, you could do a sort of a point cloud thing and that kind of stuff, but man, that's, that, that's a lot of work. So, what I did with this, and it sort of semi-worked, is I tried to average out the, the thickness. So that's why you see it got a little bit too aggressive down here uh, because of the slope of the stone, but yet up here it's very nice. So the other piece is the type of bit. Now I used a 60 degree uh, 1 8 inch bit to, to cut and I thought because of my depth I would leave more detail than what I did and I actually saw this in, in the preview but I thought mm, you know maybe this isn't how it'll turn out well this turned out exactly like the preview in cut 2d so this is one of the pieces I want to make sure I refocus this just uh because uh, I'm holding it closer to the camera now and it's so small I want to see if I can't zoom in on it for you so uh, but in general it came out pretty good and you'll notice how clean the lines are with that diamond burr now I think the pieces again because I, I cut this so small and that's really what I want to do is try to get it real small for some jewelry or trinket type stuff uh, I can go with some smaller um, end mills if you will but what I'm concerned with is the lateral torque on them because I was very comfortable with the 60 degree not breaking so I have some smaller ones such as these two but what I'm really concerned with is that the lateral force especially with this one uh, runs the risk of breaking it unless I turn the speed way down and even with the speed way down I'm concerned that cutting stone because I'm taking very shallow pass 0.1 millimeter at two two millimeters a second so I might have to try slowing it down a little bit now again with this is very successful using the water bath worked very well and that's the key because number one you don't want to aspirate um, stone dust and that's bad and, and number two you need to constantly lubricate it and as I pointed out in a setup video 
using the high density detergent works very well um, kind of keeping the water from mucking up too much and then is also lubricating the stump so anyways I'm gonna do a couple more episodes experimenting with this and see how close I can get I'm gonna throw in a couple other things I may even try the laser and, and some other stuff um, and I'm going to share it with you guys and because again uh, one of the things and I keep saying it and I drift away from it is I, I want to really kind of focus on helping you guys develop an Etsy I'll spit it out or eBay type business making interesting things and this is interesting and so uh, again you can make something like this you know on demand custom for individuals you can make them in bulk but you can create some really unique things here so anyways well, this didn't turn out perfect, eh, I made it about 80% there, and it was a good learning experience on the way. And we're going to build upon this learning experience, so hopefully you found it interesting. Don't forget to swag shop, don't forget to subscribe, comment below. If you have any other ideas for something like this, hit me up in the comments. I'm always looking for new ideas. Cheers and catch you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.